What if I told you that you can create realistic particles in After Effects without plugins? Join us as we reveal the secrets of crafting stunning atmospheric particles from the ground up. With these advanced techniques, you'll learn how to apply these particles at different depths. We'll be with you until the very end, revealing some secret tips and tricks that will leave you feeling like a particle pro. We are in After Effects and we are going to start from the middle particles. So first I'm going to create a new layer, a new solid layer, and I'm going to re rename this particles. Great, now I'm going to drag and drop a quick effect in here named CC Particle Systems 2. Just drag and drop it right over there and immediately you can see your particles. Of course, right now they look nowhere like atmospheric particles. So let's see how we can do this. If I go to the producer, I can tweak that. I want it to fill all the screen in here. So I'm going to increase the radius of the producer to fill this screen, something around that. Even more, something like, for, for instance, 300. Great. Then I'm going to increase the Y radius as well to something around that size. And now you can see how it fills all the screen. Now I'm going to reposition it to be at the bottom in here, the emitter. So that's the emitter. And let's play to see how that looks. Great, so we have particles filling all the screen right in here. Of course, right now these look more like sparks. So we need to tweak the particles in here. So go to particle and from line, I'm going to change those to faded sphere. Now there's more of what we would like. They are quite large right now. So I'm going to decrease their size. So bird size, I'm going to give it something like 0.02 and that size 0.05. Great, and now they kind of disappear. That's because we don't have a lot of particles. So to increase the particle count, we can go to birth rate and increase that to 100. Let's zoom in here to see. And right now, as you can see, they are all over the place. So let's tweak some settings inside the physics category in here. Let's open physics and animation. I'm going to select from explosive, change it to direction. I'm going to decrease the velocity in here since it's quite high. So something like 0.1 would be great and let's see how this looks and right now it is moving downwards that's because of gravity it is set to one right now i'm going to set it to the opposite direction and let's make it minus 0.1 so that we have a subtle movement upwards and that's more like it very great and one thing that i'm noticing is that it is quite moving fast right now, so I can increase the resistance. So something like 1.4 maybe or 1.5, that's much better. Great. Now direction, it's right now moving up. So let's change that to something like 90 degrees. So that would move sideways. Let's make that zero. And now we have some movement to this side, as you can see. Extra. We can maybe decrease that so that it's less random or increase it to increase the randomness. So this looks quite nice. We can even increase the velocity just a little bit to have more of that side movement and then decrease the extra. So 0 0.5 would be good, I think. That's quite good. I'm going to change the color now to be white like that and the death color to be black and then i'm going to increase the max opacity to 100 and side variation i'm going to increase that to 100 as well so that we'll have some more randomness in here let's try that out wonderful and that's basically our first particle set almost done but hang on in there we're going to do some more things to this to make it more realistic so let's Add a new layer here, new solid. And I'm going to rename this to fractal mat. And you will see in a second why. And we're going to drag and drop an effect named fractal noise. And now what we are going to do is we are going to give it some more realism using this effect, this smoky effect. So I'm going to leave this to basic. This I'm going to turn to linear. 
and I'm going to decrease the contrast in here and increase the complexity. So increase it all the way up to 20. And then for transform, we can increase a little bit the scaling. And right now this is static. So if I play this, no animation takes place. So let's add some animation. First of all, we can offset the turbulence. So if I go to the start in here, click on the stopwatch and go to the end in here of our timeline and move this like that. Now we can see some horizontal movement in here. I wanted this smoke to move within in here as well. So I'm going to tweak the evolution and I'm going to type in a quick expression in here. Very easy. So hold on Alt, all option on your keyboard, click on the stopwatch and the expressions would open up. And I'm going to type time times 50. Very easy. This will do, multiply the value of the time by 50. And don't forget this ML co colon and click outside of that box. Now let's close that and see what happens. Now we can see that subtle movement in here, which will make everything look a little bit more realistic. One final thing, we can go to sub settings in here and go to subscaling and reduce that just a bit. This will increase the detail in our smoke. Great. So what are we going to do with this? We are simply going to use this as an alpha mat, as a luma mat actually. So we're going to go to particles, go to track mat and change this to fractal mat in here. It is this one over here. Click on this box from alpha mat and change it to luma mat, just like that. And now basically the particles are showing only in the white parts of that noise of this fractal mat. So if I show that it's showing in the white parts of this. So if I remove that and see how that looks, now that's much more realistic. One final thing is we can duplicate this. So command D on your keyboard and we can show that just like that. Press T on your keyboard for opacity and we can reduce this to around 10 so that we can add some of that smoke in our scene as well. And that's our first atmosphere particles done. But hang in there, we are now going to see how we can create the foreground element and the background element to bring it this all together and make it look more realistic. So let's go to project in here and I'm going to duplicate this. So command D on my keyboard. I'm going to rename this to middle and this to, to foreground. So now let's enter into the newly created composition and I'm first going to remove the first layer, the fractal mat, and I'm going to leave this one. So, and I'm going to go to the particles layer, go to effect controls, and we are going to tweak some settings to make them look like foreground particles. Let's go first to the particle look in here and that size, I'm going to change that to 0 0.2. Great. So now you can see the particles larger in there. I'm going to change the particle type from faded sphere to lens concave, just like that. Everything disappears in here, but if we click on this little icon in here, toggle transparency grid, we can see that they are actually there, but they are completely black. So to lift a little bit that dark color, we can bring in a curves effect from here. So type in curves in here and drag and drop a curves effect on that layer. And I can toggle this back off in here and I'm going to, to lift the dark part from here. So from the left part and lift that up just like that. And we can see now the particles. Now the foreground particles, of course, would be larger. That's why we have increased their size in here. And they, there would be less of them since they would be closer to us. So we're going to decrease the birth rate to around 20 we can increase the bird size to like 0.05 maybe. Great, so now we are going to increase a little bit the velocity of this since foreground particles would move faster since they are closer to us. So let's increase that to one and see how that looks. Great, that looks good. And of course we might need to decrease the amount of these further. So something like five for instance, and I think this looks great. So let's leave it how it like it is and then we can tweak it when we combine it with our footage. 
So now let's move to the background particles. This is going to be very simple. I'm going to duplicate the middle particles once again. Control D on your keyboard. And let's rename them to background. And if we enter in here, the background particles need to be much smaller and more numerous since we can see them all. So let's go to particles in here. I'm going to leave everything as it is other than this. Go to effect controls and I'm going to go to particle and I'm going to do a 0 0.01 bird size and maybe 0 0.02 that size. So now we can barely see them, but we can increase the bird rate quite a bit in here. And if we have a look at this, we can see that we have very nice subtle effect of particles in here that look like a mist. So now let's start combining these with our footage. So let's go to project. I'm going to go to my footage composition in here. I have this great footage in here and I'm simply going to drag and drop them right over here. So let's start from the middle. And there we go, it fits right away. If you want, you can change it to this to screen, the transfer mode. So let's change that to screen. Perfect. And let's go to the foreground and drag, drop it in as well. And change it to screen. And the background and change it to screen as well. And of course, the foreground is quite intense in here. So we're going to reduce the opacity of that. Hit T on your keyboard and reduce that to around 30%. And wonderful, this looks very nice. Of course, right now it is maybe a little bit too visible, the whole effect. What we can do to integrate it a little bit better is recolor this to match our scene. To do that, I'm going to go to my particles in here and let's go to the effects and presets, bring in a tint effect in here and drag and drop it right over there. And for map white, I'm going to select a color from the screen right over here. And let's make it a little bit brighter, just like that. Perfect. Now I'm going to copy this and paste it over the other two footage layers. Now what you can do is vary a little bit the color in here to make it more dynamic. So maybe this one we can give it like this yellow yellow color in here, make it a little, bit, a little bit more orange, great. And this one, let's make it red, but a little bit more vibrant like that. Great. So let's see how that looks. We can also combine these atmospheric particles with volumetric lights to create something very, very interesting. And you can see a video explaining just that in a link in the video description below. Congratulations, you did it. You've learned how to create stunning particles in After Effects all by yourself. But why stop there? Subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks like this one. We're all about making videos that you want to see. Tell us what you want to learn in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And thank you very much for watching and get ready for more After Effects secrets in our next video.